Wow. Seriously, are you two food snobs? Gordon, you don't even live in America. What do you know? <laughs> Look, here's the question at the table. Which region has the best cooks? Take it from a southerner. The south has the best chili around. I we know that, that okay? okay? I agree. Let me tell you, Chili. I have the best bison chili in Montana. Bison. What are you doing in Montana, anyway? I was fishing. 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 Yeah. Nice. Fishing for compliments. Fishing for compliments. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so honestly, my vote is going to the West. No, the question is, have you ever had Cincinnati chili? I've never even been to Cincinnati. Well, you're missing out, OK? Because it's a fantastic Why? place. It's a flyover place. No, it's not. I think you're selling people short. The cooks in the Midwest have some tricks up their sleeve, trust me. I heard the best hamburger comes from California. Says who? Me. What do you mean? It has avocado on it? <laughs> or has, like, a soy protein? They don't even use meat when they make hamburgers in California. I take a hard pass on that. I know a bunch of great cooks in the East Coast who would beg to differ. Can I have a French fry? Look, if you're interested in spending 25 bucks for a burger, which is basically <laughs> ground beef and buns, what? You're killing me. What did I say? <laughs> no. Seriously? It's I, good. I say no. Time out. All right, guys. Let's settle it once and for all. Northeast cooks are the best. End of story. No. I don't know about that. But we're about to find out. This season on MasterChef, we're celebrating America's culinary diversity. The Northeast is bringing it. What's up, Brooklyn? Hey. West side is the best side. Hell yeah, the best cooks from the South. The Midwest is best. This is MasterChef United Tastes of America. Come on. As cooks from across the nation Let's go, baby. compete to bring the MasterChef trophy back to their home turf. I am here with MasterChef. It's a regional rumble. Midwest are owning it tonight. I think they're a little scared of us. Between the best home cooks from all over the USA. Look at that <laughs> technique. I can throw down in the kitchen right here. That does not taste good. So terrible. You really want to lose this thing, huh? I messed up. It's disaster, chef. You've got to stop, Katie. <laughs> Nailed it. This year, turn that over. Where there is more strategy than ever. <laughs> Everybody's out to get you. It's not all fun and games anymore. So I'm going to screw them over today. <laughs> it's anyone's ball game. Seriously? Welcome to Dodger Stadium. Who's ready to eat? Take the burgers and finish them. Where? Where? Where the burger? Yo, y'all heard me? In what world is that helpful? Switch. But they'll need to work together. No, not that cream. Put that down. Remember, identical plates. Oh, my god. You got to let me know. Say it. If they don't want to go down in flames. Ah! Womp, womp, womp. Oh! oh! Firefighters. Do not bring me an under steak. Come on, speed up! So everyone, all happy customers? No. Raw steak. Does anyone care in here? Welcome to Hell's Kitchen Restaurants. Ice cold in the middle and it's f***ing raw. Don't ever disrespect me. That was insane. I just don't think you're ready. I'm so sorry. That's the weirdest thing I ever tasted. I think I was doubting myself. I know you can do better. It's kind of tough, I'm not gonna lie. Only one home cook will rise to the top. You could serve it in a two-star Michelin restaurant. Thank you. It's flawless. You got a home run there. And claim the title of America's next Master Chef. Cooked like a dream. Thank you. This is your moment. Wow. This is Master Chef United Taste of America. for me because I want to show people that we are about more than just lobster and blueberries. Apron time. Yes. Where's the judges? Where's Gordon? In my apron. Gordon! Gordon! Let's go. Thank you 
so much. Welcome to the amazing MasterChef Kitchen. Now, tonight starts with the MasterChef auditions. Yeah! The one thing I've always loved about MasterChef is the way that it shows off how diverse American cuisine can be. But this season is about more than just finding the best home cook in America. We want to find out once and for all where in America do the best cooks come from. Oh, baby. Oh. This is MasterChef, United Taste of America. I know you're all extremely proud to be American, but come on, let's be honest. You're just as proud to be from the West. From the Midwest. From the South. And the Northeast. We are looking for home cooks that can represent your region with style and skill. But that's not all. On each night of the auditions, you'll compete to earn an apron against other cooks from your region. Now is your big chance to become a hometown hero and earn the beautiful MasterChef trophy. Plus, you'll win the grand prize, a complete kitchen from Viking, new tools and bakeware from Oxo, and a quarter of a million dollars. Now, it's time to prove that you truly deserve one of these. The iconic MasterChef apron. Your task in the auditions is very simple. Make us your signature dish, inspired by the culture, the cuisine, and perhaps the heritage of your region. Tonight, we're gonna start with... The Northeast! Now, each night, we'll be bringing in a very special guest judge who knows that region's cuisine better than Ooh, anyone. Okay. Here to represent the Northeast, we have a prolific cookbook author, a culinary expert, and a beloved member of the MasterChef family. Please welcome back the amazing Daphne Oz. Welcome back. Ah, wow. The Northeast is near and dear to your heart. Yes. And it's really helped shape your career. But what's so special about it? I mean, the Northeast is a melting pot. That is one of the most beautiful pieces of being in the Northeast, is you walk four blocks in any direction and you can taste the world. I think it does keep Northeast cooks trying new things, but holding on to heritage really tightly, too. And what do you want to see from these contestants tonight? The food that excites me the most is family food. What did your family pass on to you? What gets you excited in the kitchen? I get goosebumps thinking about it. So good to have you back. Right, you guys ready? Yeah. Good. Tonight, you'll all have 45 minutes to cook your delicious signature dishes. Now, to get your hands on those white aprons, you'll need at least three yeses from the judges. Your time starts when that clock starts. Give it your best, OK? We'll see you in the restaurant. Good luck. Come on. Good luck, guys! Season 13, oh, welcome God. back, by the way. Thank you. We have so missed you, girl. Cool. I mean, what a way to kick off tonight. Northeast. You know, I have to ask, season 13, you have seen it all. What are you looking for this season that's going to set these competitors apart that you think is really going to take it to the next level? Repping the region is huge here. How's that reflected to what they put on the plate? I've always said that the Northeast is the heartbeat of the restaurant world in America, and the level should be super high. It'll be the fastest 45 minutes of their entire culinary career. Three, two, one. this, Carla. Northeast got the best Italian, hands down. I mean, you're not going to get good Italian anywhere else but the Northeast. 
Oh yeah, lots of cheese. Lots of cheese. So the recipe that I'm doing is a homemade manicotti. What's really special about my recipe is that I'm making it with a homemade crepe. I can't believe I'm cooking Italian food for Joe. It's like really nerve wracking, but at the same time, I'm cooking from the heart. Final countdown. I'm Carla. This dish is so special to me. This is my grandma's homemade manicotti. So normally manicotti are made with lasagna yes. sheets. You roll them up. Correct. You're not doing that. No, I'm doing a homemade crepe. Wow. It's so much better. All right, we'll see if it works. Interesting. Carla, you need three yeses for an apron tonight. Shall All we? right. Did you drain the ricotta? I did not. Bold move, substituting the pasta for the crepe. But if you're going to do that, then get some herbs in those crepes. Just make them stand out. That's supposed to be the star of this dish. Unfortunately, if you overcook the crawfish, you have to treat them very gently. For me, that is such a glaring issue that for me, it's a no. I'm sorry. There's a series of technical issues with this dish, from the ricotta being not drained properly, from the consistency of the crepe, from the tomato sauce not integrating with the rest of the dish. It's a no for me. Unfortunately, that's two no's, so no apron. I'm sorry. This is the typical master chef entree dish that's created to fool the judges. And with the level of talent we have out there, we cannot afford to do that. You know it, it's apron time, baby, it's apron time. Usually I'm in a recording studio and you would think that would be more peaceful than this. But to be honest, I find my peace in the kitchen. This is my sanctuary. I'm Richie, I'm 28 years old. I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland, and I'm a musician and a songwriter. Maryland is in the house. I am such a proud Northeast rep. Maryland is so rich in culture and food. So being able to put it on the map, that's what I'm here for, baby. We ready for the salmon time. You know what time it is. All right, it's killing me just sitting in this room. I need to go see what's happening in this kitchen. Let's go. All right, the door's opening. Woo! Woo! It smells good. Young man. At first age. Richie. Richie, good okay. to see you, bud. Tell me about the dish. What are you doing? So I'm doing a crispy skin salmon with spinach, and then I'm going to do some Parmesan-crusted potatoes. It smells delicious. How are we going to make sure so this much. is not overcooked? Because that's the one thing that could sure. sink this whole well, dish. Right now, we're focusing on the skin. I'm going to flip it, let it get a nice sear on the top. And while it's resting, it'll bring itself up to temp. Perfect. Then it's out of my hands, you know? It. Listen, bring yeah. the magic through there. That's yes. my plan. Good luck. It's some magic. You know it. Five minutes. Five minutes. I know that cheese and fish is sometimes a big no-no, but I think the flavor of these Parmesan potatoes are so good, maybe it'll be a first, and they'll think, oh, maybe I should try more cheese and seafood. Five, four, three, two, one! There's a lot I had to leave behind to come here and make this dream a reality. It can't all be for nothing. Welcome. Here he comes. I'm Richie. I'm a music producer from Silver Spring, Maryland. Today, I've made crispy skin salmon with sweet habanero glaze, spinach with furikake butter, and Parmesan roasted potatoes. Shall we have a look? Yeah. yeah. Uh, visually, uh, great sear on the salmon. I uh, love that. It looks well executed. So this is the moment. Obviously, cooking fish to the right temperature is uh, super important. Looks good. That's peaceful. So I like it. Let's try this out. So first of all, perfectly cooked, Sam. I mean, really, you nailed it. It was so delicious. I love the layering of flavors. The only question mark for me is the Parmesan cheese, but because it was still crispy and the texture was there and the flavor was there, it's a yes from me. You have a lot of beautiful flavors happening here. But I think the idea of having the chili habanero was so necessary because the salmon is fatty, that kind of cuts that. So it's a yes for me too. Ooh. All right. This dish has a lot of 
good components to it. Potatoes and the Parmesan cheese are very well seasoned. They're crispy, they're gooey, they're good. The problem with this dish is it's like a simple dish and it puts me in a tough spot. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say no and I'm gonna pass it to my associate Gordon who will decide your fate. Uh, you have two yeses, uh, one no. You need three for an apron. You have two yeses, uh, one no. You need three for an apron. First of all, the salmon's cooked beautifully, and the habanero glaze at the end, beautiful. But spinach is watery, so it just takes all the flavoring down. Uh, tough one. Um, Can he be crafted? Uh... I'm going to say no. To the music studio, and yes, the master chef. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Yes! Congratulations. <laughs> Come here, bud. <laughs> What's your heart doing right now? He's <laughs> in your heart. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank you, well, guys. Thank good you, luck, guys. Man. I'm so well done. Prove me so wrong. Prove me wrong, man. And I will. Welcome to MasterChef. Let's go! <laughs> I got myself a MasterChef apron. I'm so excited. Yes! I'm pumped. Yes! Sacrificing the music career for this? That's Come on. huge. That's huge. I hope it's the right move. for the dough. Yeah, dough. I am from Woolwich, Maine, and I am very, very proud to represent that town because we know how to work with what we have around us. We don't have a Whole Foods in my area. <laughs> we are very resourceful. This is you on a plate. Seriously. You on a plate. My name is Nina. I'm a rock and roll marketing manager from Maine, and my favorite thing in the world to do is go out in the woods and hunt and forage and find amazing wild food to eat. For me, cooking starts outside because that's where I get all the ingredients that inspire me. That's where I hang out with all my animals and hang out with all the trees. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. What's up, guys? My name is Nina. Oh, we got some dumplings. Yes. Those look fantastic. Thanks. Kind of pretty straightforward. Just a beef dumpling for Matthew. It's not beef. It's venison. Thank you very much. Venison? Venison. Did you put pork fat in it? I did not, because that's what we do in Maine. We use what we have. Sometimes we don't have pork fat. Sometimes we have squirrel fat. We use that instead. I like squirrel fat. Yeah. Squirrels have fat? Yeah. See, he you, knows. You find them in the trees. <laughs> They're always there, OK? <laughs> this is going to be very interesting. I think it's a super risky thing you're doing, but uh, you know what? It could work. We'll look forward to tasting it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Nina, you got about 11 minutes. Not being faster, not being faster. My passion has been to get people excited about wild food. And I hope that the judges are going to taste the passion that I have for my foraged ingredients. Those look gorgeous. Oh, I'm getting hungry just looking at them. Five, four, three, two, one. There's only one thing I need to know. Does that apron come in camo? Hello, welcome. Hi guys, I'm Nina, I'm from Woolwich, Maine. I made dumplings filled with venison and bok choy, and that is served with a cucumber salad with cilantro, peanuts, and chili. Dumplings are typically made with pork. I chose to put venison in them because I am representing my home state of Maine. Shall we? Shall we? Okay, uh, visually, Daphne, what do you think? You give a nice portion of the dumplings, a lovely dipping sauce in the center. Honestly, I'm most excited about this cucumber salad. It looks so delicious. I agree, but I'm more concerned about the lack of fat inside of the venison. That's the bit that's going to be the telling point for me, so shall we? Let's go. Daphne, please. All right. And what's in the dipping sauce? That is soy, apple cider vinegar, little chili garlic paste, and some chives. First of all, it doesn't need the pork, if I'm honest. I can't taste its venison because it's not as gamey, but it's the technical flair I'm in love with, and uh, it's an absolute definite yes from me. Ooh, one yes. I want to see more. These dumplings are light and tender, delicious. The meat is juicy. That cucumber salad is a shocker. Out of control, spicy, delicious. It's a definite yes from me. Oh, thank you. That's two yeses. Okay. But I'm not going to be so quick to drink the Kool-Aid here. I don't know what these two were tasting. A 
That's two yeses. Okay. But for me, the seasoning is completely off. It's way too spicy. It's totally, totally amateurish. So for me, it's a no. Two yeses, uh, one no. Right now, your fate uh, lies in the hands of uh, Aron Sanchez. There is some technical flaws for me personally with some of the dumplings. The filling is a little bit meek. It's a lot of wrapper for the filling. But what I love is your boldness, OK? There's freshness, and it highlights all the ingredients. I don't know. Joe called my flavor balances amateurish. It's okay. I need somebody to push me. I don't need everybody yes. to tell me I'm awesome Absolutely. all the time. Very good point. Guys, look out. My competitive juices are flowing for sure. Rock and roll! Yes! yes. Yeah. <laughs> that sound is awesome. Well, I hope I'm Delicious. wrong. Delicious. Uh, really good. <laughs> Two aprons down, three to go. Standards are high. <laughs> I'm happy and excited to be here. It's an American dream which is coming true. I'm Purvi from East Windsor, New Jersey. My husband and I moved to the U.S. 21 years ago. My specialty is American and Indian fusion cooking. I want to follow my passion and my dreams. I would like to open up a cafe called Purvi's Delight, and I would like to serve desserts from all over the world. Indian community in New Jersey is really, really big. And I feel so proud to represent them. I'm making bunch cake with Indian flavors. The only thing can go wrong is if the cakes don't bake properly. <laughs> but I am very confident. I've been doing this for the last 21 years. I can do this in my sleep. <laughs> Just a little bit scared that if they cut the cakes and if it's not fully baked, that can definitely bring me down. Hi, my name is Purvi and I'm from New Jersey. This dish is vanilla bun cake infused with four different Indian flavors, which is gulab jamun, rose, cardamom saffron, and paan. Wow. Wow. Right. I love it. It reminds me of like an Indian festival, you know, and a wedding when there's just color. Yeah, thank and you there's so vibrance much. everywhere. It looks stunning. I'm dying to get in there. Right. Shall we? Let's try it. Beautiful. Oh, look how moist it is. You're really good. Thank you, Joe. I just got back from India. <laughs> the most incredible flavors gives me a new appreciation of tasting your dish. It's a yes for me. I really liked it. Thank you so much. It means a lot. This bite. It is so moist and fluffy. Thank like you. Like it so has much. levity and balance. Thank yes. you. Thank you so Definite much. Definite yes for Thank me. Thank you. You have very strong flavors and you balance them so beautifully, but I'm not going to say yes just yet, okay? Cuz I have to think about this for a little bit. Awesome. <laughs> I'm I like, know. you love it. <laughs> all say right, yes. all right, all right, all right. For me it's an absolute yes. It's a resounding yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's four yeses. Yes. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Well done. Great job. I got four yeses. I am so proud to represent Northeast. This is my American dream. I'm living it right now. Oh. Hey, judges, there's a lot of good Indian flavors are coming for you. Delicious. Pretty really good. good. The yeah. cinnamon plus cardamom combo, wow. Yeah. Those are strong flavors. I know. You weren't going to vote yes for her? What's wrong with you? I thought you were going to say no. I had to do a little drama there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> from Brooklyn, New York. We loud and proud. My name is Eddie. I'm 31 years old. I'm from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a party promoter. Big man baking a cake. Harun, <laughs> what's going on, senor? 
getting it done. You're making a dessert? Yes, sir. You look at me and don't think dessert. You just think a whole bunch of food, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a pistachio cake with a tres leches creme on glaze, a raspberry sauce that I got going right there that I'm actually going to strain right now. Yep. So you're going to use the tres leches as the format, right? Yes. You oh. seem like a very passionate guy. You have a lot of passion for cooking? Yeah, I definitely do. The first thing I learned how to make was actually pancakes with my mother. I got to make sure I impress her. Well, the dish looks really great. Yeah. Good luck. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. My love for cooking honestly came from my mom. Just learning different recipes from her and just experimenting. That love and passion just came on and never stopped since, so. <laughs> you got that. You got that. Don't worry about it. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, baby! Let's go! It's super huge to just come out here from Brooklyn and take a chance on myself, but it's Brooklyn, the home of Biggie, home of Jay-Z, and the home of the next master chef. That apron's going to look good on me, baby. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, so my name is Eddie. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And I actually made uh, my take on the tres leches. I did a pistachio cake with tres leches creme anglaise, a raspberry sauce, and a pistachio crumble. So traditionally, a tres leches is a soaked cake with three milks. Yes. So you decided to take the actual elements of the tres leches and put in the sauce. Yes. So how do you think that this dessert represents the Northeast? Well, I'm very Dominican. I was growing up in a single mom household, super humble beginnings. I've always wanted to go to culinary school, can't afford it. Tres leches means a lot to me. So I wanted to bring a piece of my Dominican heritage with me and put that on a plate for you guys. Shall we take a look? Come on. Uh, visually, Joe, what do you think? You know, look, I grew up in New York myself. I understand those flavors, those memories. This dish is very non-traditional, but I love the way the dish looks. So I'm looking forward to trying it. I mean, so well, thank you so much. I hope there's enough moisture here because there's a lot of cake and not a lot of sauce. Shall we? Tell us the two sauces. What are they? So the yellow sauce is a tres leches creme anglaise. Then I did a raspberry sauce to get a little tartness on the plate. OK, uh, young man, you need three yeses to get your hands on an apron. Um, sure. Joe, how was that for you? What I see in front of me, I like a lot. But it's not the dish. So I'm going to make a big investment, and I hope you have what it takes to take this to the next level. I do, sir. And I believe that you are a great guy. And for that, I'm going to say yes. I think you need more sauce. I think you need half the amount of pistachios. This is not a tres leches, but I believe that you want to do something that represents you. And I applaud that. So for that reason, that's a yes. I have no doubt about your potential in the kitchen, but my job is to judge the food. And because there wasn't quite the balance of sauce to cake that I would have liked to have seen, it's a no for me. Young man, you clearly were born to cook, and it means so much to you. I get that. Coolly delicious. Creme anglaise, delicious. Um, but it's another level this year. I just don't think you're ready for MasterChef. For me, it's a no. I'm sorry. Come here, bro. I got to tell you something. Look at me. This was tough. Great food, great restaurants are made by great people. And what I'm going to do when you come back to New York, I'll take you in, you tour my restaurants. We can put you on the path to the culinary career that you really deserve. I promise that, bro. Good luck. Thank you. It hurt getting the nose. Joe said he trained me in New York, though. So you win. Joe saw something in me. So even though I didn't get an apron, that's a win in my book. I really liked him and who he was and what his passion was. But it's an unfortunate situation when the dishes that people present do not reflect their talent as cooks. And to find this nice little side of you is very refreshing. It's heartwarming. Oh, you've never seen yeah. it before? It's like the eclipse once every 10 years. <laughs>
This cake has to be super lava-y on the inside, otherwise there's no chance I'm getting an apron. I need to have my lava flowing. It's gonna happen. My hands are shaking. You can do it, Ross. You're almost done. Three, two, one. Let's go. I'm Ross. I live in New York City. I'm a bartender. I made a chocolate and molten lava cake. Oh. So this is a uh, standard in the MasterChef kitchen, the molten lava. So we got to make sure that it's running. Oh. Uh-oh. Damn. Uh -oh. All right, let's taste it. Love the dark chocolate use. It's the most beautiful balance of sweet and bitter, but missing the molten on molten chocolate cake is like a crime. It's a no from me. It needs lava, right? It needs liquid. When you say stuff like molten, you're making a promise to us. And when that doesn't happen, it's disappointing. bar of entry is high, Got and this is just not there. No. Cooking like we're cooking at home. Yeah, but with makeup on. I'm Bryn. I'm 33 years old. I live in Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm a bartender. Do the shaky shaky and a little turn. I have been bartending for 14 years, but I started cooking a couple years ago, and I realized there was so much more to explore, and that I love doing it. Babe, killing it, killing it, killing it. I feel like it. I'm killing Let's it. Let's get it. it smells good. It smells really good. Oh, it's it smells always in this best. kitchen. Good evening. Hello, how are you? How are we good? Yeah, I'm good. First name and where are you from? I am Brynn, and I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. And what are you making? Okay. Um, I am making a um, crispy black sea bass with a little bit of harissa seasoning. I'm working a um, pear and dried cherry chutney. Mm, I love that. I think of Rhode Island. I think of lobster rolls, yeah, like chowder. Yeah. We have great food. Why chutney with bass? I wanted to do something fruity, um, and I think it really highlights what I like to do with flavors. The bass, um, you're going to be cooking skin side down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be careful with the skin. Get it crispy. Yeah. And Harissa, bringing a little heat. It's just a little bit of heat and smoke on the fish. Good luck, yes. Thank Good you. Luck. Keep it cooking. Do I have all my things? Does this look like everything? I feel like in the past I've been like a little bit reserved. So getting the apron would mean that I was right to keep dreaming and not limit myself. Five, four. Oh my God, you did it! I am so much more than just a girl who works behind the bar. I would love to be a real chef, and I am going to make this happen. I am Bryn, I am from Providence, Rhode Island. I'm a bartender. The dish I've made for you today is a uh, black sea bass with a little bit of a harissa spice. I've topped it with a pear and dried cherry chutney and roasted fennel and blanched green bean salad. Mm, love that, and what's the food dream? So I've only been cooking for about two and a half years, but I've always wanted my own bar and restaurant. Shall we have a look? Go. Okay, uh, first impressions, hold on. I'm so proud that you took fennel and along the theme of seasonality and let that really be the catalyst here for flavor. I just love the imagination, and there's Thank clearly you. a lot of thought process gone into this. Um, I'd never douse the top of a crispy skin with chutney. However, uh, let's get in, shall All we? Right. Let me see if this chutney is undoing your crispy skin efforts. And the harissa, where did you end up using that? So I brushed it on the base of the fish, just trying to keep it nice and crisp. The fish, I think, is cooked beautifully. I think this chutney does make it a little less crisp, but the chutney itself is so delicious you don't care. So it's a yes for me. Thank you. It's fresh, it's vibrant. You have a lot going on here that is so yummy. And for that, Thank you. I say yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> thank you so much. Two yeses. Oh my gosh. Three for an apron, Joe. There's a lot of naiveness in this dish. But for an amateur cook, it's quite astonishing. You're cooking instinctually and with honesty, and that's really, really important. That's a yes. Thank you. Amazing. Three S's. The skin has gotten soggy. So next time, 
chutney underneath the fish, Heard. but everything's there. That's the beginning, cooking for a couple of years. It may be the loss for the mixologist side, but congratulations. Wow. Thank you so much. Well Thank Great you, Ed. Thank you so much. Really good job. I got four yeses. It means that I was right to trust myself, to follow my instincts. This is the beginning of something new and exciting and a new chapter for who I am, and I can't wait to keep going. You don't really see Chutney with fish, and she's just broken the rules. See, you never know in life. At 30 years old, you figure out that your real talent is cooking. Absolutely. time you need for them steaks. Not a lot. Put them on now. So New Jersey, a lot of people think it's some sort of industrial wasteland. It's the Garden State. We got the best produce. The Northeast is top dog, and you're going to see that. I'm Ryan. I'm construction superintendent from New Jersey. I'm good at my job. I like to do it, but my true passion is food. It means everything to me because food saved my life. I battled addiction for about 10 years. I didn't take care of myself in any way. Ryan. I was overweight, depressed. All right, Ryan, this is it. So proud of you, buddy. So proud. Burnt a lot of bridges, but my dad never gave up on me. And um, can't thank him enough for it. After 10 years of living like that, I got sober. I wanted to get healthy. I wanted to become the best version of myself. I am completely obsessed with the art of cooking, it's a healthy outlet to put that addictive nature into. Come on, Ryan, you got this, man. Hands down. Thanks. Dish I'm making is steak and eggs, but there's a samurai egg. I'm going to separate the whites and the yolks. I'm going to do a gruyere and caramelized onion inside with the yolk and then fold it over. I made it up, and it's delicious. So the steak's got to be perfect. Luckily for me, I've cooked filet mignons blindfolded, but this egg is gonna be the most important egg I've ever cooked. Good. Perfect? Yep. All right. This is it, Rye. You've come so far, man. I love you, man. Yeah, I owe it all to you. Five, four, three, two, two one. one. It's definitely a risk to cook simple steak and eggs for Master Chef, but they've never seen steak and eggs like this. Welcome. Tell us about the dish, please. I made a beautifully cooked filet mignon with samurai egg on top and an avocado steak. Why steak and eggs? This dish, you know, saved my life. Wow. I was a heroin addict for 10 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. My goodness. I have a brother, sadly, still to this day, that is a addict. It's very rare you bounce back. When I look back, you know, my dad you know, he was, he, sorry. No, come on, you're fine. Yeah. You know, he was watching his son that he loves slowly kill himself. One day I just said enough was enough. One day at a time, one dish at a time. Yes. Shall we? Yeah, okay. check it out. Visually, it looks clean. I mean, it's the weirdest looking egg. But I just love how creative it is. So when you cook a steak, a filet like this, how do you cook it? Medium rare. Let's see. The egg is nice and runny. Oh, yeah. Excellent. It's really a different experience of steak and eggs. The steak is properly cooked. The samurai egg is kind of whimsical and interesting. Yeah, I'm a yes. I think what we saw here is genuinely an extremely thoughtful preparation of an extremely simple dish. And at its core, beautiful cooking is that. It is simple things done perfectly. So for me, it's a yes. Ooh la la. Thank you. Look, I love food that's stripped down, but for me, it's missing something. You put a lot of time and effort in the egg. But other than that, I don't see a lot more there. So for me, it's a no.
Ryan, you have two yeses, one no, and you have one judge left to cast his vote. Stakes nailed beautifully. But I think what you need to know is that we see so many fillets. Um, I don't know. Hey, guys, that's intense in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Good to see you. Oh, like... First name is? Scott. Scott. I just want to take a moment and just say well done for bringing him back. Thank you. OK. Now, I need to tell you a little bit of bad news. OK. Unfortunately, you're not going to see him for a few months. This moment just proves that he was so much more than his, his addiction. And, you know, he was destined for much greater things. Thank you. Getting this apron definitely feels like a turning point in my life. It took a lot to get here, and I am not looking back. Next time on MasterChef. Welcome back, everybody, to the United Tastes of America. The region competing tonight is the Midwest. And we have another guest judge, Graham Elliott. Do not let the Midwest down. The regional audition rounds continue. Count it out, baby. If this dish doesn't earn me an apron, I'm not sure I understand what you're looking for on Master Chef. As the Midwest cooks compete. That looks like home. For a coveted white apron. It's symbolic of the Midwest and the heartland. The passion's there. I can taste that passion. This dish is a wow dish. The sauce just tastes so bland. Fingers crossed it tastes better than it looks. One potato, two potato.